The first time I learned about dispersed camping was watching YouTube a few years back. I spent my whole life in cities under a rock, okay? And I was like, wait, you're telling me I don't have to pay money to camp at a campground in between two other groups that are blasting EDM and I can actually enjoy the peace and quiet of nature? Shut the front door. That's right, free camping where quite often you can be all by your lonesome. And after I heard about that, I started looking up a bunch of information and watching more videos. But you don't have time for all that. So let me show you everything I learned about finding dispersed camping locations and everything I do to scout for that next epic campsite. Okay, let's start with the most basic free camping information, which is generally speaking, you can camp for free in any national forest and on BLM land, which is short for Bureau of Land Management. There is one specific exception to everything I just said, which is that Angeles National Forest down in Southern California does not allow any dispersed camping whatsoever. Otherwise, Skid Row version 2.0 would probably be there. And yes, sometimes there are specific restrictions for these areas. So the best thing you can do is to check the website for whatever national forest or BLM area that you're going to, and then search for dispersed camping information there. There are also some state parks and wildlife areas that allow dispersed camping, but again, check the website for whatever areas you're interested in going to and look for dispersed camping specific information there. One of the best ways to check what's considered public land or not is to use something like Onyx Off-Road or Gaia GPS. Both of these services have map layers that'll show you public land borders. Is there another resource that you can use? Probably, but I've always used these two simply because they also give me offline GPS navigation capabilities. And if you're planning to adventure off grid where you don't get any cell service, having offline GPS navigation is pretty darn handy and a must have for me. And something like Google Maps just isn't gonna cut it for this. Here's a quick example of what I'm talking about using Onyx Off-Road. So you have this lavender area here, and that's showing you national parks. So we got Kings Canyon National Park and right below it, Sequoia National Park. Around that, you have this light green area, and that is, I believe, Inyo National Forest. Down below, you have a dark green area that's showing you wilderness areas. And all this yellow right here is BLM land. You got another big lavender area that's Death Valley National Park and this pinkish area, which is a Naval Air Weapons Station. Definitely don't camp there, but you get the idea. You have a really clear border showing you public land versus not public land. And we'll take a look at this way more in detail a little later in the video. So we all know that every national forest, BLM area, state park, etc., have their own specific regulations on dispersed camping. But there are a few general guidelines that we can all follow when doing dispersed camping. Don't camp within 200 feet of fresh water to limit your impact on wildlife and the environment. Don't drive onto vegetation off the trail and set up camp wherever you want. Use existing areas that have already been cleared to set up camp so that you're minimizing your impact on the area. Don't overstay. Every area has a maximum stay limit. For example, BLM areas typically have a 14-day maximum within a 28-day period. Again, check with the appropriate land management agency on specifics. Do obey any fire restrictions. If permits are needed for fuel stoves like in California, obtain them. Do adventure responsibly. And if you don't know what that means, I encourage you to visit treadlightly.org. So now you kind of know what larger areas that you should be looking at when it comes time to find a campsite, but how do you find a specific campsite location to use? Well, I kind of already gave you clues on two of the tools that I use, which are Onyx Off-Road and Gaia GPS, but let me show you what I do with those now. Sometimes I'll use other resources like iOverlander or freecampsites.net, but pretty rarely. And when it comes to Onyx Off-Road and Gaia GPS, you really only need one or the other. You don't need both. I've been using both for about the past year or so just to compare, and I'll be making a video on which one I think is better that'll be coming in the next few weeks. So keep an eye out for that video. Hit the subscribe and notification bell so you don't miss that one. If you're planning on doing any of this kind of stuff and you don't have either of those, you really should. Both of them offer one month free trial, so there's really nothing to lose. And I can't resist saying this next cheesy line, there's nothing to lose and everything to gain. 
So this is going to be a real basic tutorial on how I use Onyx Off-Road and Gaia GPS to scout for potentially good campsites. And I'm going to pick an area that I've never really researched or marked any locations for yet, and it's called Bowman Lake, which is a little lake in Tahoe National Forest. So let's go to Bowman Lake here and take a look around and see if we can find some good camping locations. So if you've never used Onyx before, you see a bunch of these highlighted lines, and that's just what I have selected, which is high clearance 4x4 trails and full width roads. This is not going to be a full tutorial on how to use Onyx off-road. If you are interested in something like that, let me know in the comments below, and I'll try to make some time to make a dedicated video for that. So here's Bowman Lake, and as you can see, all the trails kind of running along the north edge of Bowman Lake. So we're going to concentrate on those areas, look along the shoreline, and see if we can find any good camp locations. So I'm going to start in this general area and just kind of zoom in here. So as you can see, there's some cleared out areas right along the trail here, and that might be a good camp spot. And it is in National Forest land, so we're good to go in that regard. And it's kind of hard to tell if it is a great spot because we're in 2D mode right now. So you don't know if there's any like big slopes or anything like that. So I'm going to switch to 3D mode. And from that angle, what you can adjust. It looks relatively good. Like not super sloped. And there's probably some good areas where you can set up camp. So I'm going to keep a mental note on that one. And I'm going to pan along the shoreline here to see if I see anything else. Maybe right there. But it does look pretty sloped, so maybe not. And let's keep going along the shoreline. That is a potential area, but again, it looks like it's pretty darn sloped, so maybe not. Let's keep going here. Doesn't look like too much along that road there, at least in that area. And oh, the hill's throwing off my camera angle there, so let me go back out to more 2D looking. I'm getting a lot of beach here, but then again, you know, with the tide and everything, I'm not really sure. And it doesn't look like there's a clear path down there, so let's keep looking. And we have an actual campground marked out here, so I'm going to zoom into this area. Um, this whole part looks like a good potential spot also. And being that it's an initial marked campground, I mean, that's always a safe bet. So it looks like along the North Shore here, we have this area, and then way back here, we had this potential area right here too. So not bad, right along the lake. That would be pretty awesome. But what if we wanted to venture off in to the hills up here some more? Well, it looks like there's some paths that get you up there. So let's take a closer look at that. Let me get back out to 2D mode so it's easier to paint around here. And as you can see here, you got kind of a checkered board thing going on. You got Tahoe National Forest and then not Tahoe National Forest. And, you know, this might be like land that's uh, dedicated for something like logging. Or it could just be completely private land, too. But if we go up to the trails here, let me see, we got, this box is Tahoe National Forest, so we got some trail winding through here, this little tiny track right here. I'm going to zoom in and see if we find anything interesting. Well, it looks like that dead ends here, obviously. And if we zoom in, have a little open area. So let me change the angle here and see if it's going to be... Okay. I mean, it might be okay. Looks relatively flat right here in that spot. And if I zoom out and we kind of just pan around this whole section here, I'm just going to put a little waypoint there temporarily just so I don't lose where I'm looking. Looks like you'd have some pretty nice views of the surrounding area being higher up in the mountain there. And you know what? That might be a pretty great spot. It'd probably be really secluded because all you got is that little track going down to it. The only concern would be that you're crossing through some area that's not public land per se. Um, there's a right of way right here, as you can see, marked out with uh, Onyx Off-Road. 
Um, it's just a matter of this little track right here. If there's like a gate anywhere or if there are any signs that say no trespassing, then you'd be a little out of luck with that spot. But that's kind of how to look for potential spots here. Using the 3D mode and a really detailed map like this that shows you where public land is makes it a little bit simpler. But you do have to spend a little bit of time, as you can see. Now let's head over to Gaia GPS and do the same thing, just so you can get an idea of how to use Gaia if you have it. So Bowman Lake, whoa, it's got us way zoomed in. Let me zoom out. I do have a layer here on Gaia GPS called Private Land, so that's giving you a little bit more detail. Uh, so let's take a look at where we were earlier with that little spot. If I can find it again, there we go. So it's around that spot there, I'm gonna copy the GPS coordinates and just paste it into Gaia. Yep, there it is, a little bald spot. As you can see, as I zoom in, the detail on the satellite maps is a little better on Onyx. I'm already in 3D mode right now, or am I? Nope, let's toggle it on the 3D mode. And that way I can pan around with this one too. But what we're concerned about is that area right above it, to the north of it. So that is Sierra, oops, Sierra Pacific Land and Timber Company. So it's a logging area. And generally, those guys are cool with you using four service roads in their areas, as long as there's no post signs and they're not currently working and there's no lock gates or anything like that. So one of these days when I finally go to Bowman Lake, I'll definitely remember to check out that little spot right there and see if that would be a good one because it looks like it, there's a pretty awesome view there but those two spots down over here and right there would be some great camping too right next to the lake so if we compare that to say google maps let me put it in satellite here and then let's go to bowman lake and i'm sure you guys have used google maps before i mean the satellite mode is super high detailed as you can see you can zoom way in and still have it be clear. The problem with Google Maps, though, and I'm going to plug in those same coordinates to that one spot we were looking at. So there's the spot there. And as you can see, it looks a little bit different, but, I mean, it's still clear of trees. You still have some dirt right here. And you can see that path when you zoom way, way in. But when you're zooming out and you're panning around, like, just looking for things it makes it really hard because you don't know where the trails are and things like that. I mean, you look at that versus Gaia. And let me turn off that private land layer for now just so it's a little easier to see. You see all the paths all like highlighted for you basically. So it makes it really easy to quickly pan around and see like what might be a good area to zoom into. Same with Onyx. You have all these all highlighted except for the smallest trails that are a little harder to see but still visible for sure. And you can zoom in and then kind of check out if it's going to be a good spot. And Google Maps does allow you to do like 3D mapping and panning around. But once you're in 3D mode, like it's even harder to see like where the roads are. So not the best tool for doing this kind of thing. So yeah, that's pretty much it. There's no instant result easy button that you can mash, but it's not complicated. It just takes a little bit of time. And it'll be time well spent because after a long day of driving, you don't have to wander around to find a campsite, you already know where they're located. Remember to keep an eye out for that Onyx Off-Road versus Gaia GPS video that's coming out soon. And I'm also wondering guys, if you have any good tips on how you find dispersed campsites. If you do, leave a comment below so that we can all benefit from your knowledge. If you found this video helpful, consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons down there for me. And even if you don't, I just appreciate that you're watching. As always, remember, destinations don't matter, the journey matters. This is Roger, wishing happy trails to you. Keep smiling until then. But you don't have time for all that, so let me show you what I do. <laughs> let me show you everything I learned. Let me show you everything I learned.